And now we're really pleased to have Phil Lane Jr. come forward. And Phil's known around the world and he's a really big heavyweight as far as uh, working on causes. He's a medicine man, he's an uncle, he's a mentor, he's a friend, and he's someone's love. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. My wife, my wife's right out there. And my son's here. Uh, Mitaki Epi, my very beloved relatives. I really want to give thanksgiving from the bottom of my heart to the Creator for standing on unsurrendered, unceded land of the Casey, Kwantlam, and semi Moon nations. We are here, free, on this land. It's never been sold. It's never been given up across this province, except maybe 8% of it that was given away in treaties, and then I questioned, some of the people might question there in their own communities what that was about. But the fact is, that this is not about Aboriginal land claims. This is about Canadian land claims. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they turned this around. This is about looking out over this great British Columbia and all the beauty that we have throughout this province that all British Columbians enjoy and asking yourself, what's the price tag on this that should come to the First Nations of this land? What is that price tag? There's no amount of money to pay for pipelines, Imbridge, or Kinder Morgan, or oil tankers on this water. And I join with the Fraser River Declaration, and I join with the declaration of the Coast Salish people here that this shall not be that these pipelines, these tankers have no place here. And as well, the tar sands itself, if this is fulfilled as they pray and hope it does, will raise the temperature of Mother Earth more than at least three to four degrees. This is not just a British Columbia issue, a Canada issue, this is a global issue yeah. of all people. I also want to give great, great thanksgiving to, Pre to Premier, I mean Prime Minister Stephen Harper because his in continued and deepening injustice has awakened a movement, a spiritual and cultural movement that our ancestors have prophesied and promised for more than 500 years. And this movement is destined is destined not only to awaken here, but it'll awaken the entire human family, that we're one human family, and that all life is related, and the hurt of one is the hurt of all, and the honor of one is the honor of all. Woo! You know, I want to say whatever opinions people might have about this treaty uh, position about the Governor General and the Prime Minister studying together at the same time. But the fact is, I was here in 1982, and I know these brothers, at that time, we all had black hair. <laughs> Probably about two inches taller, <laughs> and our plumbing was good. <laughs> but I remember 1982, there was a freedom train that went back to Ottawa. Yep. Probably some of you on it. And at that time, because of the work of the ancestors, many who are gone, remember that when the, the Canadian Constitution was brought back to Canada, the treaties were left with the Queen, with the Crown. They were not bought, brought back here. So the correct position is that when those treaties are discussed, a representative of the Queen has to be sitting there. Yes. So we must remember that history. <laughs> The other thing I can I want to add here today is that some of these things that our gentleman that just was here that represents one of the political parties of Canada, when I first got a chance to have the honor to step on this land back in 1970, at that time, at that time, children living on reserves received more of 30 percent or less in education than children living in the provincial system across Canada. That was 1970. Children in child welfare, 
they receive 30 percent and less on reserves than in the provinces. At that time there was a shortage of homes which today stands at 85,000 homes that are needed for just the people living on the reserves, let alone all those who would like to go home. I ask you, is this just? Is this justice? Oh, good. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, I really haven't been involved in these kind of campaign quite like this before. But no, it's not. And one stroke of the Prime Minister's pen can eliminate that. Yes. One stroke. And then they tell us they're going on justice. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see it for the children. And I want to see it not just for our relatives on reserves and our Newton Métis relatives, but I want to see it all well is for those people who can't find a place to live on the reserve, but who also are the landowners of this land right here. Hey, 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 hey. In the urban areas as well. Finally, I want us to remember that what the Canadian extraction industry is doing here, the mining, the oil companies, they're doing it to indigenous people everywhere on Mother Earth. They're destroying our relatives in Peru's land, yeah. Ecuador, Brazil, yeah. Philippines, yeah. Malaysia, you name it, they're there. And this country has sunk billions and billions and billions of dollars and invested all people's money into supporting these mining and petroleum companies to destroy our Mother Earth. Our resources. And so we've got to really, I believe, from my perspective, stay on this path, this red road, and keep singing and keep praying because we know what the power of these songs are. We know what the power of prayers are. We know what the power of faith is. Hey, 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 hey. We know that. And we know ultimately there is no power in heaven and earth that will stand before these prophecies and our prayers and our songs and our dances. Never. Hey, hey. Never stand before them. So that's where we're going, Mitaki Epi. And to close this, I just want to share this this um, little bit about what's happening next week in South Dakota. Uh, on January 23rd, 1863, the Ahankwa Dakota, which I am an enrolled member of the Yankton Sioux tribe, and the Pawnee Nation, who if you saw Dances with Wolves, were at that time fighting. They signed a peace treaty. It was the first ever written peace treaty between two Indian nations. And we have relatives coming from Canada and the United States down there first to celebrate the signing of this treaty, at which the time the Pawnees and the Ahankawa Dakotas are going to make a binding agreement to stand together and fight the Keystone XL pipeline. In fact, the treaty says an international treaty, not a, not a declaration, because we have a right between First Nations to make treaties. It says an international treaty to protect the sacred from tar sands projects, all of them, from where they're happening in Alberta to them coming here. And I'll say this thing as well, that this whole, whole if it comes to this, and I pray that, that, that it doesn't have to come to this, but if they go forward with this Kinder Morgan expansion, which showed such egotism last week in the middle of our Idle No More uh, movement, what they announce? They announced about a 40% increase in tankers and in pipeline oil coming into, into the broad inlet. How can they do this? What kind of arrogance is this? But if it ever comes down to having to stand up with Mother Earth in protection of our trees and this beautiful air we have and the water, that's where we stand. If it comes to that place, the fact is, we are standing within our Aboriginal legal order. It's an inherent order. It's a sovereignty that has never been surrendered. And as well, I suggest that if we went to First Nations who have made treaties across this country and the United States and other places in the world, if we ask them, have these treaties been honored? What do you think people would say? 
No! They have not been honored. They're abrogated, they're broken. Therefore, there is no Supreme Court of the United States or Canada as the nations who broke these treaties that can arbitrate them ultimately. It's only coming to international tribunals and turning to the international legal order can our indigenous legal order ultimately make its full expression. That's my opinion. So if there's actions taken out of our own sovereignty, out of our own foundation of inherent laws, the aboriginal legal order that respects our seven generations, that respects the Mother Earth, if that action is taken, it is not civil disobedience. That's my opinion, if it ever comes to that. If the 130 nations who signed the Save the Fraser River Declaration make a decision, finally, because there's no other choice to stop the tankers on Burrard Inlet, if they legally violate our traditional laws, I believe if they send people there, they don't arrest those people, they arrest 130 First Nations. That's just a thought. So I thank you for your kind, kind, and loving attention, and I wish you a great, great Idol No More Day. How? Ho, 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 ho.